Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is the launch again of Something Super. Definitely need to get a new intro for that one. It's 2080 Super Time. Let's do it. So obviously over the last couple of weeks we've seen the launch of the 2060 Super, 2070 Super and today sees the launch of the 2080 Super. Basically cards that are going to be taking over from the non-Super variants. I mean for you guys out there as consumers that's actually a really really good thing because it means you, I guess in theory, you should be able to go to a retailer and get a really, really good deal on a 2060, a 2070, or a 2080. So obviously 2080 Super has taken over 2080. That basically means that we have slightly faster uh, clock speeds, better performance overall, and hopefully more aggressive pricing. Now before we kind of go anywhere with this, let's talk about pricing. So in the US, the MSRP, I guess on the Founders Edition card, is 699 US dollars. In the UK, it's 669 pounds. So to put that into some kind of, I guess, perspective, there are going to be cards from various other brands out there, sort of partner cards, I guess, if you will, of kind of differing price points. Obviously, we're going to see our blower style cards, which are actually going to come in generally a little bit lower than MSRP. Then we're going to see kind of our, I guess, slightly improved coolers and factory kind of overclocks that are going to be coming in a little bit more expensive. And then at the top end of the scale, you're going to have the likes of your kind of Strix cards and your Aorus cards from Gigabyte and, uh, you know, so forth and we have actually got a video where we're going to be looking through three partner cards so definitely go and check that one out but this video is all about the founders edition so i want to talk specifically about this card now cooler wise there's not really too much to sort of touch on purely because well it looks the same as any other super card it has the kind of you know reflective mirror on here and you probably saw that we didn't actually have launch day reviews of the 2060 super or the 2070 super so for me this is actually really interesting to get hold of Admittedly, it does look exactly like a 2080, apart from with that mirror finish on there. We still have the dual fan design, and it still does only take up two slots inside your chassis. Of course, we do have some kind of, I guess, unique features, uh, specifically things that we may have not seen on kind of the lower end cards before. So we have got the likes of MV Link. So if you did want to put this into some kind of a dual GPU configuration, then of course you do have the option for it. Now, when it comes to NVLink and sort of scaling, I'm gonna be honest, I've sort of looked at, I guess, what other people are doing and some of the tests that we've done ourselves. And well, it just doesn't seem like, I don't know, the most sensible option anymore. And I think maybe that's where Nvidia are going with their sort of super series cards. Why would you end up buying say two 2060 super cards when you could just buy one 2080 super card instead? Obviously pricing is gonna be a key factor of that, but you have to look at kind of what performance you're actually gonna get by having two GPUs and the scaling you're gonna have versus the price of a single card. So yeah, I know a lot of people have been talking about this recently and well, maybe multi GPU platforms are actually a dying breed. Now other features of the card, obviously we do have have the full backplate on there and being a founders edition I honestly believe that a lot of people are going to buy these specifically for ripping them off and putting water blocks on it that's exactly what I've done with 2080 and 2080 Ti's in the past and I think that the 2080 Super is going to be no different obviously to power the card we have an 8 pin and a 6 pin power connector in terms of connectivity options you can see that we have the typical three DisplayPort 1.4 connectors a single HDMI and of course for virtual link we do have the USB type C connector other than that there's not really too much to talk about aesthetically so let's talk about the specs of the founders edition card so core clock on the founders edition card you are looking at 1650 megahertz the memory clock is clocked in at 1938 megahertz a little bit of a weird number i would have expected maybe 1950 or 1900 or 1925 but 1938 Maybe there's a reason, who knows. When it comes to the boost clock, you're gonna be looking at 1815, so 1815 megahertz. And this is where I guess cards are gonna sort of slightly differ. The core clock is always the same, the memory clock generally is the same, but we have got cards and I have got them next to me, but I don't wanna take away from the fact that we're looking at the founders edition. So like I say, I've got another video where I'm looking at that and they do have slightly sort of varying boost clocks. So I've got the Zotac Amp Extreme, I've got a Gigabyte a Gaming OC, and I've also got a Palette Game Rock card. So slightly different price points, slightly different overclocks. But for the most part, the Founders Edition is what kind of everyone, I guess, works from and tries to sort of better, but for obviously a reasonable price point. So talking about performance, the key element to any graphics card video that we do here at eTechnics, is obviously seeing how far we can push it. While it does have its own boost clock, we wanted to see if we could take it even further. So let's take a look at exactly how far we managed to overclock it. 
So in terms of the Founders Edition card, compared to say a generic blower style card, it has actually got a slight kind of factory overclock. So it's actually uh, boosting to 1815 megahertz. Uh, we were actually able to push the core clock up by an extra 70 megahertz, taking the default clock from 1650 on the core clock up to 1720, and consequently the boost clock went from 1815 up to 1885. When it came to the memory, we was able to get this up another 1200 megahertz, taking it from 1938 up to 2238 megahertz. We did actually find we were able to push the memory clock a little bit further, but it did mean reducing the core clock and also vice versa. Honestly, with the speeds that I've ended up with, it seems like this is the sweet spot to get a little bit extra on the core clock and quite a bit extra on the memory clock. So that, that's out the way we want to obviously see how this card does on its own merits, because it is a pretty powerful card, obviously, in the grand scheme of things and where it sort of lays in the stack it is classed as a high-end card. The only card above this is obviously a 2080 Ti. There was talk of a 2080 Ti Super but it doesn't actually seem like that's going to happen. So without further ado let's take a look at those glorious benchmarks. Performance wise, what can we take away from this? So obviously what Nvidia have planned to do is release a card that sits between the 2070 Super and the 2080 Ti. Guess where it falls? Exactly between those cards. Pretty much in every single test, there's gonna be a few little variances here and there, but we saw the 2080 Super fall pretty much exactly where it should do. For the money, I guess it is one of the best value cards out there on the market from Nvidia. Obviously we can't take away the fact that AMD have their 5700 XT which is fantastic when you're looking at 1080p gaming but when you sort of want to go a little bit further maybe 1440 and especially 4k you are going to be looking at something like the 2080 Super. If you have the money obviously there is a 2080 Ti. Now pricing on the 2080 Ti I don't know whether anything's going to happen with that whether the price is going to come down slightly obviously they don't want to muddy up the stack too much so when you're looking at sort of price point of the 2080 compared to 20 80 Ti, I think Nvidia still need to kind of get the balance right in terms of the performance that you get for X amount of money, so 699 in US, 669 in the UK, compared to obviously the price of a 2080 Ti, which is admittedly 
dramatically more money than a 2080 Super. I actually think that the pricing on this is pretty fair in the grand scheme of things, because yes, you are getting sort of raw, unadulterated performance, but we do have to have a look at other things as well, such as, it is a ray tracing based graphics card. So you probably saw that we did kind of performance results in Port Royal as well as um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Honestly, I can't wait for our charts for that to, you know, get a little bit more fulfilled, maybe when AMD brings something to the market. But for now, Nvidia do have the monopoly on ray tracing. And it is something that we're definitely gonna be looking at a lot more in the future. Now, there are gonna be a little, lot of people out there who probably don't quite understand ray tracing because when it first came out with Battlefield 5, it did actually mean that the graphics kind of performance took quite a dramatic hit. But due to the fact of ray tracing now with DLSS, it has actually kind of given us, I guess, that performance boost again. So if you look at the results, and I invite you to actually rewind this video a little bit and have a look at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results, you will actually see that with ray tracing enabled, we was actually getting better frame rates than with it disabled. That's purely because of DLSS. So ray tracing basically means that it takes a hit. If you're getting say 70 frames per second, it's gonna drop down to maybe 55 or 60. But then with DLSS, it goes back up to say 80, 85 frames per second. So this is fantastic and it's only gonna get better over time with the fact of what Nvidia are doing with their drivers and obviously the way that the game developers are working with Nvidia to give you this new functionality. So what is the key takeaway from this? I guess it's down to if you want that raw kind of performance and you want it to look great, then I guess RTX is the way forward. And the RTX 2080 Super just adds to, I guess, the lineup in a way that we've kind of been expecting. Something that gives you great performance, great looks for a pretty reasonable price point. And if you don't think it's a reasonable price point, then there's always a 2070 Super instead. And if you can't afford that, there's always a 2060 Super. Either way, we now have, I guess, ray tracing based graphics cards from every end of the stack for pretty damn reasonable price points. That's just my opinion. I know I'm gonna get flamed in the comments that people are gonna say this is ridiculous, $700 for a graphics card. Well, Nvidia don't really have any competition in the market at that price point. So what are they gonna do? There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one. See you later, bye-bye. So to put that into some kind of, con if so, 2080 Super, it's probably,